The test is divided into four sections. All the recordings are played once only. Section 1. Look at questions 1 to 5. Good afternoon, Plainfield Community Centre. Yes, hi. I'm new in town and I was curious about the services the community centre has to offer. We offer a variety of recreational activities. What were you interested in in particular? Well, uh, everything, I guess. OK, let's start with kids. I have a teenage son. What activities do you have for teens? Right now, during the school year, we have tutoring sessions for children and teens in all subjects. That would be good. He needs help with algebra. We can certainly help with that. Just have him come by any Wednesday or Saturday afternoon. That's when the tutoring sessions are scheduled. Fantastic. What about sports? Do you have sports activities for teens? We have tennis lessons on Sunday mornings for teens and Sunday afternoon for adults. Hmm. I don't think my son would like that, but my husband might. For myself, I'd be more interested in yoga. Do you offer yoga classes? We do. Our yoga classes take place on Tuesday and Thursday evenings. We divide it up into several groups, so there's one class for younger children, one for teens, and one for adults. Really? I doubt my husband and son would be interested, but I'd like to sign up for yoga. I also like reading. Do you have any book clubs? We have one just about to start. The first meeting will be next Friday morning. It will focus on early 20th century novels. Too bad it's Friday morning. I think my son would enjoy it, but of course he's in school at that time. Well, actually, that book club is for adults only. We may start one up for teens next summer, but we have nothing for that age group right now. Oh, well. I suppose he has enough to keep him busy for now. Now, what about fees? Do these classes and activities cost anything? Look at questions 6 to 10. There's a small charge for non-members for each class. However, they're all free to members. Would you be interested in becoming a member? How much does the membership cost? Not much at all. The yearly fee is $75 for individuals and $225 for families. What do I get with the membership? You get free access to all classes and activities. And you can use our facilities like the tennis court, the exercise room and the meeting room. It's not a bad deal, really. Could you tell me exactly where the centre is located? It's at 107 Elliott Street. Is that Elliott with two L's or one L? One L. E-L-I-O-T. It's right downtown. I think I know where it is. Do you have free parking? Yes. You can park just across the street. There's a garage there. That sounds easy enough. Maybe I'll come in one day next week and sign up for some classes. That would be fine. But don't come on Monday because we're closed that day. We're open Tuesday through Sunday. Oh, thanks for telling me. Maybe I'll stop in on Tuesday then. Can I pay for the classes with a personal cheque? We accept cheques and credit cards. OK, thank you very much. You've been very helpful. You have some time to check your answers from 1 to 10. Section 2. 
Look at questions 11 to 17. Hello, Mike. What's up with you? Oh, Tom, it's my landlady again. You're always in trouble. What is it this time? You see, she's left a note for me. Just read it. Well, did you leave the front door open? I honestly don't remember. I got back late from a party. Anyway, what does it matter? It's all complaints in that house. First noise, then the bathroom. Well, in that case, why don't you look around for another place? I've already started. I looked in the paper this morning. Plenty of advertisements as usual, but most of the places are too far from school. Look, why don't you come and share with us? But surely there are four of you in the flat already, aren't there? Yes, but you know, Jane is leaving at the end of the month. She's got a job down south. There will be a spare room. It's rather small, but you can sleep there for the moment till you find a nice one. That's a good idea. How many rooms do you have? We have... Four bedrooms and a big living room. What are the arrangements? Well, we share all expenses, of course. Rent, light and heating. What about food? Well, we each buy our own. It works out fine that way. And you can do anything you like in your own room. But there is one thing. What's that? Don't leave the front door open. Strange people may wander in. All right. I promise that won't happen again. Look at questions 18 to 20. By the way, when is Jane leaving? Let me see... Yes, this time next week. Today is the 22nd, Tuesday. So she's leaving on the 29th. Well, I'll, I'll move in in one day after she leaves. Yes, no problem. We will get ready by then. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. You have some time to check your answers from 11 to 20. Section 3. Look at questions 21 to 23. We'd better start planning our research project because we don't have much time left before it's due. I know. Only three more weeks. Is that all? I thought we had more time than that. Well, let's get to work then. OK. So we agreed we're going to interview shoppers about their spending habits. Did we decide to conduct our interviews at the department store? We haven't decided anything definitely yet, but I think the shopping mall would be a better place. We'd get more of a variety of shoppers there. Yes, that's a good point. So let's do that. How many interviews did the professor say we had to complete? She said at least 30. That sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Yes, but if we divide it up between the two of us, that's just 15 each. That's not so bad. Look at questions 24 to 30.
so I guess we'd better start designing our questionnaire. Well, we have to do some reading first, don't we? Didn't we say we were going to compare our results to the results of a government study? Right, the government study about how the economic crisis has changed people's spending habits. We want to see if we get similar results. Yes, so we'd better read that first and then design our questionnaire. Then I guess we'll be ready to go out and interview shoppers. No, don't you remember? The professor said she had to approve our questionnaire first before we actually conducted the interviews. Oh, right. So we'll get her approval and then conduct the interviews. I think a Saturday would be the best day for the interviews because everyone's out shopping then. Right. We'll do it on a Saturday then. And let's also plan to get together the next day to analyse the results. It's best to do that while everything's fresh in our minds, don't you think? Sure. That sounds like a good idea. OK, a y so then we're going to have to present our results to the class. Do you have any ideas for that? It's an important part of our grade, so I think we should plan it well. Well, I think the obvious thing is to prepare some charts showing our results and how they compare with the government study. That will help make the information a lot clearer to the class. Right. OK, a y so we'll draw up some charts of the results. And then that's it. All that will be left to do is give the class presentation. Do you think we can be ready on time? I sure hope so. Let's get started now. You have some time to check your answers from 21 to 30. Section 4. Look at questions 31 to 40. Many typically American characteristics, individualism, self-reliance, informality, punctuality, and directness are a result of those values mentioned earlier. Other national traits could also be identified, however. 1. Americans cooperate. Although often competitive, Americans also have a good sense of teamwork and cooperate with others to achieve a goal. 2. Americans are friendly, but in their own way. In general, friendships among Americans tend to be shorter and more casual than friendships among people from other cultures. This has something to do with American mobility and the fact that Americans do not like to be dependent on other people. Americans also tend to compartmentalize friendships, having friends at work, family friends, friends on the softball team, etc. 3. Americans ask a lot of questions, some of which may to you seem pointless, uninformed or elementary. Someone you have just met may ask you very personal questions. No impertinence is intended. The questions usually grow out of a genuine interest. 4. Americans tend to be internationally naive. Many Americans are not very knowledgeable about international geography or world affairs. They may ask uninformed questions about current events and may display ignorance of world geography. Because the US is not surrounded by many other nations, some Americans tend to ignore the world. 5. Silence makes Americans nervous. Americans are not comfortable with silence. 
They would rather talk about the weather than deal with silence in a conversation. 6. Americans are open and usually eager to explain. If you do not understand certain behaviour or want to know what makes Americans tick, do not hesitate to ask questions. Just as values and traits differ somewhat from one culture to another, so do the personal habits associated with good manners and courtesy. While very often there does not seem to be any particular reason why a particular way of doing something is considered good manners, observing these cultural rules will make Americans more comfortable with you, and therefore you with them. It is, of course, impossible to cover all the possibilities here. If you are unsure in a situation, just ask. Americans like to be helpful. 1. Queuing up or lining up is essential. Courtesy requires that you do not push from behind, stand next to the person being helped, or cut into a line. If you should accidentally bump someone, you should say, Excuse me. 2. Americans blow their noses into a tissue. Spitting, clearing phlegm, or sniffing as from a cold are considered rude. 3. It is considered poor manners to slurp, chew noisily, or open your mouth while chewing. 4. Questions are seen as a good way of getting acquainted, but questions about a person's age, financial affairs, cost of clothing or personal belongings, are considered too personal for questioning except between very close friends. 5. Men generally do not hold hands or link arms in public with other men. This is somewhat more acceptable between women and quite common between men and women. Now, a few words about personal safety. Unfortunately, in the US, one must be aware of crimes. It is wise to be especially careful until you are familiar with the community in which you live. Remember that good judgment and common sense can significantly reduce chances of having an unpleasant and perhaps harmful experience. Basic safety rules include the following. 1. Do not walk alone at night. 2. When you leave your room, apartment or automobile, make sure that all doors are locked and all windows are secured. 3. Do not carry too much cash or wear jewellery of great value. 4. Never accept a ride from a stranger. Do not hitchhike and do not pick up hitchhikers. 5. Be careful of purses and wallets, especially in crowded metropolitan areas where there may be purse snatchers and pickpockets. 6. If a robber threatens you, at home or on the street, Try not to resist unless you feel that your life is in danger and you must fight or run away. Give up your valuables as calmly as you can and observe as much as possible about the robber to tell the police when you report the crime. A final note. Keep an open mind. Don't judge what you see as right or wrong, but make it a challenge to try to understand the variety of American behaviours which you may observe. You certainly do not have to participate in something you disagree with, but you can try to understand it. This will help you build an attitude of intelligent and liberated respect for cultures, both your own and others. You have some time to check your answers from 31 to 40. In the IELTS exam, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.